Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome you to Dave and Dave's Hardware Store. Yeah! I paid $6,500 for everything inside here. This was a bold undertaking, buying a whole hardware store on the other side of the country. Things are either absolute treasure. Look at all these pennies, man. Or they're absolute garbage. I feel like I'm getting the hauntavirus. I gotta get out of this room. Hello, sir, we're lost in this maze. Uh, lost in the maze, where you at? We just passed the garage. Keep on going. Oh, I see it right there. Oh, the garage. What's going on, guys? Yeah, man, hey, thanks for coming out. So listen, we're here in Franklin Park, Illinois, visiting some friends of ours, the brothers from K2 Express. You guys remember I bought the uh, cab over Ford, right? Well, they had two of them. I fell in love with the trucks and uh, bought both the trucks. They shipped them out to Salt Lake City for me and we've become, you know, just really good buddies ever since. These are the great guys. They have a huge trucking company here and uh, we're here to uh, pick up a truck from them. They have a Kenworth W900, which is probably one of the most beautiful trucks you'll ever see in your entire life. They're not using it and they just want to see it, uh, you know, out doing cool stuff. So I'm basically borrowing it for we don't know how long. These guys are some of the greatest guys in the world. Literally, I found a truck on Facebook Marketplace, bought it from them. They made me an incredible deal. Turns out they're fans of the show. They're Polish brothers. They're actually, they're all from Poland and they are just hilarious. And I love these dudes like brothers. They just, they're like, when you meet somebody and it just clicks and you just trust each other, that's what happened here, and that's why they're letting me take their insanely perfect Kenworth W900. And it gets even better the closer you get. Most semis from far look great. You get close, close, close. It's like, uh, I don't know. This thing is immaculate. So it's a 99 essentially, but like everything's new and custom. Got the custom hood, it's lowered, airbags in the front, tri-axle, got like a 700 horse, 3406 cat in there, 18 speed. It's just, guys, let me look at this truck. Stretched frame, they have this giant wrecker boom on here because they have like 100 trucks here. They use it to haul a bunch of trucks around. So this right here is what's coming off and we're gonna throw the fifth wheel plate on and then what's happening? Guys, we're gonna take a quick break from this video to talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is Aura. This right here is the list of all the blocked phone numbers in my phone. 99% of these phone numbers are robocallers. And it got to the point where I was getting 15, 20, 30 calls a day and I was just super frustrated. I'm sure you guys have felt the exact same thing because the robocaller is just out of control. There's data brokers out there. Those data brokers collect your information, your address, your phone number, any information they can find about you and they sell it. And it's just kind of weird having your stuff out there for the whole world to see, which is why Aura, the sponsor of today's video, is a big deal because Aura provides you with this app and this uh, service that basically protects all of your information. It does the work of multiple different uh, apps and softwares. It basically, it's a VPN to protect your browsing experience. It's a vault for your password. It's a credit monitoring service. Um, they reach out and they actually do the hard work of telling data brokers to remove your information for you, which is a really big deal, which really reduces the amount of robocalls you get. Guys, I'm telling you, Aura is just, dialed. I mean, it really has every single feature that I could possibly want for identity protection and just overall privacy. Bam, right here in one easy to use app on my phone. I'm going to show you guys this thing. So it just showed me that there's a couple of uh, alerts on here that my email was leaked in a data breach with, you know, this company, that company. And it says, what would you like to do? And I say, remove it. And boom, it's all right here, guys. It shows you your credit score, shows you where you're logged in. It just is a comprehensive overview of all your private information and how to protect it. And I want you guys to try it because private information is kind of a big deal and privacy is becoming more and more important every single day. So if you click the link in my description below, go try Aura for two weeks, absolutely free. They're gonna give you a two week trial. If you like it, I would keep using it. So click the link in my description below, download the app, try it out for two weeks, and thank you Aura for sponsoring today's video. Now you guys go get protected. And then, what's happening? Full surprises. <laughs> um, and then they have this low boy trailer that was custom built for my cab over Ford back in like the 80s and they've kept it around and we're gonna take it to haul the container up to Detroit and then take this home and put it to use.
That's a bad idea. <laughs> Mike, a great idea. Mike just got himself a new toy. 77 uh, Camaro that is impeccable. Like a very, very nice yes, build. Very nice. And I try and be on my best behavior. They were like, take it for a spin. I'm like, no, no, no. Like, I still want to be friends with you guys after this. That's a bad idea. That's a bad idea. <laughs> semis and it wasn't doing everything they needed it to so they modified it so it distributes the weight better uh, more forward and uh, this truck hasn't pulled a trailer in a long time in fact this is the truck they used to haul my cab overs out when they pulled them um, and they towed them just off the wrecker hitch it's basically a quick detach wrecker so normally these things are built to sit on a kingpin hitch which puts all your weight kind of far back so they took this and ran it all the way to the front. And so the weight is being pushed all the way onto the truck and it rides way better. This thing is like a towing marine. My black cab over Ford was like their pride and joy for a long time. I mean, this truck has a fantastic pedigree. These are all awards that my truck won before we ever even got it. It's such a cool combo. It's like a, it's a vintage low boy. 88 is vintage now, but it's still, they, you guys restored it. And, yeah. Shot. Don't even worry about it. Check out this. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Freaking money. Please. I've already told you. Coming here is always just just nonstop surprises. I've seen pictures of this bus or this thing with the cab over towing this, and um, and I was like, man, I've wanted one of these for a while. And so basically, what that led to is now I'm buying this. <laughs> these are like old like band tour buses they gutted the interior of this one so it's just an empty shell but i've wanted one of these forever to be able to turn into like a tour bus for us when we go and do like vlogging and stuff this man's a dangerous influence on me you know set up your hammock in here oh yeah it's a 40 hammocks in here and the hammock party <laughs> my collection is adding up into this store that I just bought everything inside of for the first time. I'm working with like two or three pictures on an email. I will tell you this, there's a lot more stuff inside there than I really originally anticipated. So if you need any hardware needs, uh, wants, desires, come to D&Ds. We're gonna set up shop somewhere. Can we settle on that? That's the name? Double D Hardware. All right, let's go see what I bought. <laughs> it's a lot more stuff. I got dibs on all the gardening stuff. I'm actually gonna start a business putting uh, numbers on mailboxes. And... We're gonna need some help. Bought a sight unseen, right? And then I scheduled one day for us to be able to get it cleaned out. And m half of that day's already gone because we got here at like 4 a.m. last night and had to get a little bit of sleep. So they had a 20 foot shipping container out back that we were able to buy from them as well. So we bought all the contents of the store plus a shipping container which is why we went and got the Kenworth. So we're gonna put the container on the low boy there and load it full. It's welcome. <laughs> Alan's got a giant sickle. I don't know, we'll see. All right, take it easy. Here comes Rippers. the Rippers. 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 Yeah, look at this thing. This thing's in good shape. Nice. <laughs> what is it? Stick of dynamite. No, it's a candle torch, which I believe is probably like a road flare on a stick. <laughs> no lightsaber games? No, no. What do you think, Al? <laughs> it's one of your most uh, wacky uh, purchases ever. <laughs> You're one of my most wacky purchases ever. Nice. You got stuff like here, like from maybe the 1800s. This is right. back when hard, hardware used to be like really like well built. If you ask me what that year range is, I couldn't tell you, but I'll tell you that there was a time and place where not everything was Chinese. There was like nice stuff. He doesn't have a tenant for this place yet, obviously. It's like, well, you don't say. 
As long as we do it in somewhat of an organized fashion. Are those bottle rockets? <laughs> That's what they look like, huh? They're candle torches. Oh, I really want to light one. So we got the container pulled out for around back and we're basically just gonna slide it over the rear of the low boy here and we'll have our own little uh, box truck basically. This is uh, our friend Robert LeBue. Robert is the owner of the building here where the hardware store was, and you've worked with the previous tenant, the owner, and then he shut down about 12 years ago? Uh, give or take between 10 and 12. Okay. Can't, don't remember exactly when, but it's been shut down for a bit. It's got a lot of years of history, Yeah. and it's it's going to be missed by a lot of the people. I'll bet. It's classic stuff in yeah. there. I mean, there's stuff in there from the 30s probably. Really? Yep. This right here is Sierra. This is the man who reached out to us and said, hey, here's the deal. Here's what I got. And you happen to be the next tenant of this property. That's correct. He doesn't have a tenant for this place yet, obviously. So why'd you think of us? Um, you know, I caught you guys, man, and I was like, man, they, they, they're very interesting. Cool. <laughs> you know, so I was like, let me see if I can reach out to them and see yeah. if I can do something. And I kind of brought it together. So. Yeah. Oh. We've got some moving to do. So we're gonna head over to the hard or to the other hardware store, probably Home Depot, yeah. grab some boxes so that we can kind of pack everything nicely and then get moving. So. I gotta tell you something really cool. Anytime we do a project like this, uh, we get to meet really cool people, whether we hire local contractors to help us or just local you know, friends and you know, fans come out. Mike runs uh, Rusco's Towing. You guys do heavy towing, all sorts of stuff. Everything, yeah. Yep. Uh, in order to move the container, we obviously needed somebody that was willing to get creative. And it's funny, not a lot of tow companies, they'd look at that and be like, don't want anything to do with it. You use your truck really well. And so if you guys are anywhere in or around or near Detroit, these are the guys to talk to. Thank you, bro. Thank you. <laughs> huh? Give me a minute. <coughs> what do you need, man? What do we have, Alan? Look at all these pennies, man. Look at, look, yeah. look at all the pennies. They're all new pennies. There's the old pennies. Okay, so here's the deal, guys. I paid $6,500 for everything inside here. I got two or three pictures sent to me in an email from Sierra earlier, and he's like, hey, here's what's in here. Take it or leave it, make me an offer. Originally they were off, they were asking like 10, 12 grand, and I was like, mm, it's not worth that to me, but I'll you know, throw it off for 6,500 bucks. Took them a couple days, they got back to me, they're like, you know what, fine, we'll take it. With that said, $6,500 is what we paid for the store. Paid them another $1,500 for the shipping container, which is actually a really good deal on the container. And so we're into it, what, seven, eight grand plus flights, trucking stuff. You know, we're, we're over 10 grand getting here. And so what we're focused on is the valuable stuff. Anything that's metal, anything that's like a valve, brass, hardware, that kind of stuff, we're going for first. Then electrical wire, cable, tools, that kind of stuff. Basically the consumer items, light bulbs, um, anything that's like in a plastic wrapper, is probably gonna come last, just because that stuff's all old, outdated, it's brittle. So we want the hard stuff that just is basically kind of timeless. That's where we're gonna start. Based on what I'm seeing, there's enough hardware in here to at least break even, but I don't know. We might even do a little bit better than that, we'll see. I did not expect that to work. Let's mix some paint, shall we? You got a paint mixer? 
Frick yeah, I got a paint mixer, bro. I was gonna mix up your wall paint if you still needed it. Yeah, I do. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I just saw it all day. Yeah. How did it chuck it right at my gut? I don't know if I'm doing this right because I'm pretty sure I just broke it. Oh. Yeah, I broke both sides of it now. All you did was open up your ribs for that. That's a turbo shaker 5000. It's like not LED, not up to current standards probably, but somebody's gonna want them maybe. I'm gonna have the most aggressive selection of nuts and bolts. I don't know if you guys had this when you were growing up, but my dad had like this bucket of nuts and bolts in the garage. No organization whatsoever, just kind of one of everything or 10 of everything. And that was like my go-to when I was like working on my dirt bike and stuff as a kid. Well, my kids are gonna have the ultimate nuts and bolts container. Oh, this is a dangerous room. There's a whole lot of insulation falling down in there. You got a baby carrier and a nice rubber mallet. Alan would like that. Popcorn Christmas bucket. Everybody's got one of those. This one's full of... Handles. Ooh, glass. All different shapes and sizes of glass. This is nice. This is a pipe threading machine. We got all the dies and everything in there. This thing's gotta go. This is this is a beauty. It's got some rust on it from the leakage of the roof, but the main components have no rust on it. And we have all the different fittings for it. That's that's a nice that's a nice find right there. You get diesel help. Tools, the evolution of the sprinkler. I mean, this is probably the same as any other sprinkler in my home depot right now, so. I was trying to figure out what's junk and what's not. And so now to the point where things are either absolute treasure yeah. or they're absolute garbage. But right there, you can see I've started collecting like a treasure tote. That's <laughs> those are, these are like important things that, when I started making this, I thought, you're coming home with me. And that's just been walking around grabbing little knickknacks. And I've been completely useless for the last 30 minutes. <laughs> Hold on, is it locks with keys? It's all the stuff, it's all the stuff, yeah, they're locked with keys. It's things that I struggle finding at home. Do you know how many of these things I burn through with that giant ass flag at my house? The wind whips through these things in like a week. And they're like $14 a piece. There's a lot bigger ones. Well, I already took point me in the right direction, pal. That's kind of how my afternoon is going. I went from super productive, I was like clearing out one section at a time, to now I've got this old sun faded gum plastic container and I'm just collecting one knickknack at a time. Better than me, I've been waiting for customers. Did you guys see the most inbred Leatherman on on the planet? <laughs> Nobody wanted the industrial stapler. Cherry Coke. If you get Alan a drink, don't get him Cherry Pepsi. Don't get him regular Coke. Either Cherry Coke or regular Pepsi. Uh, as far as the hardware store goes, we've actually covered a lot of ground. We got a lot of stuff in that Connex. 
and uh, it's actually organized very well where we can get a lot more in. Now we're looking at the keys, we're looking at the bits, we're looking at saw blades. All those are gonna go. I've got this for the gym tonight. So if I don't sweat enough in the hardware store, I'm gonna throw this sauna suit on and hit the treadmill at the hotel for about an hour. Should be about 185 when I come out of there. Okay. We got a lot of other like miscellaneous stuff, so we'll go through it and see what's of value and probably just end up filling the container as full as we can get it. Dave had to use the restroom. He had to do a, so he went back to the hotel because that's where he's comfortable. He's a, he's a high maintenance <laughs> pooper, that guy. He might be taking a power nap, but he was a little delirious when he left. He was busy making himself a special tote. As you can see, he's got his special clamps. He's got his special industrial tweezers. What in the world is he doing with the giant pair of tweezers? He's got a, another matrix tape and then just a ragtag fishbowl of locks. I think maybe he hit his, uh, he hit his limit and probably needs a power nap. He'll come back strong, finish, finish the day strong with us if he makes it back. You want to watch the movie back from the beginning? <clears throat> All right, kids. I thought but the... Daddy, you fast forwarded it. All I want to do is rewind it. <laughs> Look at the good part already. You've moved up from the small fish bowl to now an entire tote. I found more stuff. Soon it'll be the entire container. It already That's basically is. what's happening. Ooh, I'll be able to water my lawn from any chair in my house. <sighs> One raccoon trap. You got any raccoons in your yard? No. As you can see, our 20 foot container is pretty much full and it actually worked out just about perfectly uh, for all the stuff that we wanted to take. There's still a ton of stuff in the store, but a lot of it is just trash, um, old brittle plastic, stuff that really has no value to us. We got all the important stuff, you know, pipes, nuts, bolts, hardware, tools, uh, garden equipment. We got a lot of stuff. I would guess that we probably have somewhere in the range of 15 to 20,000 pounds worth of goods in here. It's a pretty good load. Now our plan is, since we're still in Detroit right now, we gotta be back home tomorrow for another event. So we're gonna take the truck over to the uh, tow yard, Rusko's, the guy who helped us this morning, and park it there. And I believe Hunter, or one of our other guys, is gonna come out in a week or two and drive this thing home. Now, some of you may be wondering, what are we gonna do with all this stuff? And I'm wondering the same thing. I don't know whether we're gonna try to use some of it, keep some of it, sell some of it. But I will tell you right now that if uh, anybody watching this wants an opportunity to make some money, by buying this whole thing and reselling it, shoot us an offer. I'll sell you the container, I'll sell you everything in it. The options are, if you're interested and you wanna buy this from us, it'll be traveling from Detroit towards Salt Lake, so we could potentially drop it off somewhere. I don't know, this isn't a sales pitch, I don't really need to sell it, I kinda of wanna keep some of it, but again, if somebody's watching this and you're like, oh, I can make some money on that, info at shoot me an offer, I'll make you a deal on it, and uh, you can make the rest of the money, because there is a ton of value in there. So just like we do with everything, we buy the lost freight, buy this other stuff. I give you guys a chance to buy it first. And actually last time on the last on the lost cargo load, uh, we sold out stuff to different people. And from what I understand, everybody who bought it made a lot of money when reselling it. So we try to leave some margin and some meat on the bones. But with that said, we are gonna close the doors, hook up the low boy and get out of here. Rolled the dice and I'm still not sure where we're gonna be at on the value of uh, breaking even or making any money. But really for me, it was exciting. I didn't know what was in here. Cracking that door open this morning and you know, basically going into an old time capsule. Pretty freaking cool. So, all right, that's it.